the middle of the eighth grade, my parents moved from Theodore to Sims. Now, it was traumatic in a way that had never been traumatic before because normally we didn't rent a home in a not so good neighborhood, but this by chance we did this time. And my parents on Sims Middle School and my sister that was younger than me um, turned out to be a pretty funny story. So here it goes. I rode the school bus and my sister and I and about 20 other kids because there was only one bus stop. And unbeknownst to me and my mother, my hard-headed sister sat in the back of the school bus. And there was one girl in the neighborhood that I had noticed that she was my age and about my size, but she um, was a tomboy. I'm not downing her for that. She's very athletic. She's very strong, as I was to soon find out. Well, my dumb little sister, for some reason, sits behind her uh, on the bus. And there's a little spider crawling on the window, and she smushed it with her finger. And she reached around in front of the seat and said, Look here, Elaine, what I got. Well, when she did that, the girl hauled off and hit her so hard on her skinny, bony leg that it made a, a, a huge fist print on it. When Kathy got off the bus, she was crying and hobbling, and I, I, cause like the big sister, I'm gonna wait on her, but here she comes hobbling and squalling. And I said, what in the world's wrong? And she showed me her leg, and I, I'm gonna tell you, it, it looked like that, knuckle prints and fingers and all. And um, I said, well, what in the world did you do? I knew the heifer had to do something. But anyway, she's told me about the spider, and I said, well, look, can you go on to class? Tell the teacher what happened and she'll take care of you and I'm going to go talk to Elaine. Now, honestly, folks, I had no idea that I was going to go in there and start a fight. That was not my intention. I just wouldn't tell her to not hit my sister anymore. Because, frankly, if anybody had a right to hit her, it was me because she was always driving me nuts. But as things turned out... It didn't take long. I can't recall exactly what I said or what she said. I know she wasn't very nice and she used some horrible language. But next thing I know, she was all over me. I guess like you'd say, a spider monkey. And I was doing all I was worth to stand on my two feet. And in fact, she almost got me on the ground until a teacher come by and stopped us. Well, we're sitting at the desk, uh, at a table rather, up front. Seemed like a huge conference desk and I'm at one end she's at the other and we have to write what happened well I had asked permission to call home because I knew I wasn't supposed to ever be in trouble and this was my first time being in trouble I asked to call home and get my mother to come to the school they told me no well okay so I just keep writing my story they take this girl on into the office and long story short, she'd been in there a lot. I didn't know it. But anyway, my neighbor, one of my uh, neighbor down the street came in to pick up her son because he was sick. And she was shocked. She said, Elizabeth, what are you doing sitting here? And I told her quickly what had happened which she, and asked her, please, will you go get my mama? Well, she did. She, she said, don't you worry. She, I'm going to go get her. Well, it didn't take long. I'm still sitting out there at that big old table just waiting, and here comes my mama through the door. Now, let me tell you, my mother did not go anywhere without being dressed appropriately. She did not wear shorts. She wore slacks. But she walked in in shorts and barefooted and a Winston cigarette in her hand. I'm not joking you. She looked at me, you all right? Oh, yes, ma'am. I scared to tell her. No, I'm scared to death. <laughs> but she she said, I'll take care of this. She walked in that office, slammed the door, and I'm telling y'all the loudest talking. I couldn't understand what they were saying. But I knew my mama was giving somebody the what for us, and it was probably because they wouldn't let me call her. All right. Y'all, this is probably going to get a little long. I'm going to hurry it along, but I'm going to take a short break right here. So yeah. hang on. All right, folks, I'm going to try to finish this up again. This is my third take three. Anyway, 
when mom picked me up from school we got in that old 65 bowls mobile and she didn't say nothing to me and i didn't say nothing to her and it was hot no air conditioning and my mom was driving like a wild woman uh both hands on the steering wheel and she's puffing on that winston cigarette and i know she's still mad and all of a sudden she looks at me she said elizabeth and i said yes ma'am she said uh you know you gotta whip that girl's a double s and i'm like well okay but mama I'm, I'm telling you she's really tough i don't matter well i'll fix it y'all you gonna you gonna take care of her you can't let her run over you so I resigned to just best thing to do is just do what Mama says. If you learn any lesson out of this story, that's the best thing to do: is follow your Mama's advice. Um, we get home. She says, "Come around here with me." She gets a mop off the side of the house and she puts her foot on one end of it and gets a hacksaw and cuts the handle off about two foot long. She said, "Here, I want you to take this and I want you to make that girl stop." And I, I said, okay, you, yes, ma'am. And, and uh, I felt really sick to my stomach. And I remember uh, going to lay down for a little bit because, remember, I got out early. And she said, when the bus comes now, you're going to let the bus leave, and then you take care of her. So I laid there thinking, I guess like this stupid mop handle is supposed to turn into a magic wand or something. I'm not sure. But I had this plan. I figured if I hit her in the head and knocked her out, on the ground at least, I might stand a chance. Now, I didn't want to kill her. There wasn't no thought of that. I just knew I had to have help. So when uh, my sister drives me up there because she has picked her kids up off the bus that has like 20 some odd kids on it, and um, I lay down in the back seat. And when the bus leaves, I step out with this mop handle in my hand. Well, she sees me, and she starts laughing, and then she spreads her feet in a stance like, uh, come on, big girl, let's see what you got. And, I mean, she was calling me all kinds of names, and all the kids just, just parted like the Red Sea on the sides of the that dirt road. And I'm telling you, it was a hot afternoon. Dirt, gravel. Everything, it was just hot. And I'm sweating bullets when I go up there, but I've still got that plan. I'm going to hit her in the head, knock her out, and that's going to be the end of it. Well, when I draw, got close enough, and I mean, she's staring at me and got a, a smile on her face. She's ready to bust me up. So I draw back. What? Going to hit her right in the head. It hit her in the neck, like right here. And she just barely wobbled didn't even phase her and I dropped the stick and it goes out in the weeds and here she goes on top of me beat me and I was doing all I was could to stand on my feet but didn't stay there long down the dirt she got me on top of me she straddled me popped me right in the mouth and broke my front tooth half off I nearly choked to death on it and she finally had pity on me and got up and um, I'm going home sick I mean, I was hurt. Uh, took a few days to get to the dentist and get him to pull the nerve out. And um, then they started another dentist, started a root canal. That took a little process. And uh, back in those days, they did give you a temporary cap. So what I went back to school with was a little bitty white tooth in the front. And y'all tell I got big teeth. A little bitty baby tooth and a gold post at the bottom. So a space on both sides. So when I talked to somebody, I just did like this, and I didn't let anybody see my mouth. And it was simply because I knew how hideous I looked. Now, the last two months of school, she left me alone. People quit talking about me. I mean, I was old news by then. Well, I didn't bother her. She didn't bother me. And you got to remember, we're still living in the same neighborhood. Uh, my birthday had come, and I'm going to tell you, I turned 14, and I had got this great little AM FM radio with the record player attached to it and all that thing had this built in handle it was fine and uh, I'm walking from my sister's house down to her house down to our house which I have to pass her house and I look down and there she is on a mini bike going 
just stirring up dust and dirt everywhere right in the middle of the road. And I started, I said, what in the world I do? And I said, well, I know I can't run from her. got to face her anyhow. So I said, I'm not going to say anything to her. She don't say anything to me. So I'll keep walking, and I'm looking straight down. This is the straightest dirt road you've ever seen in your life. I'm not even going to acknowledge her. I'll just ignore her. Well, she starts riding around me, throwing up dust, cussing me for everything in the book, and then I just stop. And she's going around me and around me, still calling me ugly names. And I thought, you know, I might break my radio. But I promised, God, I am not going to drop this thing. So I decided when she got right to my arm there, peripheral vision, that I was going to whack her and just hit her as hard as I could and not drop that radio. Well, at the time I drew back, whoop, I hit her and it stunned her and she went sideways away from me. And I swear to this day, I don't know where them two boys come from in front of us, wide open on a 750 Honda motorcycle, begging to, whoa, and right over, wide open, whoa. They run smooth over her. They landed over in the ditch away from me, thank God, and I was, I was frozen in place. It's like slow motion that happened. But I'm telling you, she started screaming and wailing, and the gas and the oil stink, the ball and the smoke going everywhere. People were coming out of their houses, and I finally come to myself, and I took off running. Mama, just as fast as I could. Well, nobody pressed any charge. It really wasn't my fault, but I, I guess I distracted her. But um, where them two boys come from, I'll never know. But she did have to leave an ambulance. Three uh, places her leg was broken. She had to have surgery, pins put in it. She never did come back to high school, but I'm going to tell you the truth. When I went to high school at Mary Montgomery that next year, school term, some several people come up to me and said, Listen, did you break Elaine's leg? And I said, I sure did. <laughs> So, end of the story. Moral of that lesson is, it's better to stand your ground. Bullies will never die.